Hey, Life Force Nation, how you doing? Mark Callum here, Director of Clinical Development. Uh, glad to have you with us. I get questioned every week about how to treat diabetic neuropathy. So I'm gonna go over that today, give you some treatment tips, and basically go over a study that was published in 2019 on this topic that used Life Force equipment and had really nice results. Um, so what they tried to do when you're dealing with diabetic neuropathy is address both the foot, in most cases to the lower, lower extremity problem. So the study looked at treating the plantar surface of the foot as well as the low back, trying to address the dorsal root ganglia where the cell bodies of nerves reside. So there were two for, portions to the treatment and we'll be talking about the settings for both of those so you can replicate it in the clinic. For those of you that are wondering, well, how does laser help a problem like a diabetic neuropathy? It's a great question. And what they've shown in vitro is if you put a neurite uh, underneath light with the right wavelengths, it'll actually grow. So it can show that it causes it to heal and repair. Uh, in, in vivo, when you're treating it in the body, the thought is, is that you're gonna improve the circulation around that nerve, which is often compromised with the changes from the diabetic neuropathy and the uh, problems with the hardening of those small capillaries. And it also promotes growth factors. So the thought is that you can get better axonal scrounging, which will actually help the nerve repair and possibly grow even new nerve tissue, which is really great. Uh, in addition to that, you're gonna cut down on some of the inflammatory cascade that's going on around these painful uh, peripheral neuropathy type complaints. And that's what the study showed is that when they used a laser, it really helped reduce the subjective complaint and had a significant impact on one of the inflammatory markers that they were looking at that's associated with that inflammation. So that's kind of the why. Um, but for what you guys are mostly interested in is how. How do I treat this thing? So we're gonna go over that today. Um, I have the 15 watt FXI with me today, which is equivalent to the machine that they use for the study. You don't really need a ton of power for this problem. And part of the reason is that when you're treating nerves that are sluggish, like is the case with diabetic neuropathy, if you overstimulate them, you can get a lot of rebound pain. And that'll make for an unhappy patient when they come back to see you the next day and say, hey, I felt pretty good after the treatment, but three to four hours afterwards, I had a lot of pain. And what that usually is indicative of is you put too much energy into the tissue. So the study took that into account and started by treating very conservatively and then building uh, on the protocol as the patient came back and said, hey, I'm having no pain, it's feeling good. Then they would slowly increase the dose. So for the foot, they utilized the large cone, which I have on here now. Um, and they started at just two watts when they were treating the plantar surface of the foot. And the reason why was they wanted to be conservative. And then they built that up with each successive treatment as long as the patient came back and said, hey, I'm having no new pain, it's feeling good. They would bump it up by one watt per treatment until they got to a max of 10 watts. So the highest power they had on the foot was 10 watts in this study. Uh, and that equated to a dose of approximately nine to 15 joules per centimeter squared when it was all said and done. But the initial uh, treatment, they would last for three minutes so they would estimate the size of the foot, and we'll go over this in just a second on the screen on how to use your perfect protocol to calculate it. But they did three minutes of treatment for 360 total joules applied to the foot. So if you have older equipment that doesn't have the perfect protocol, your target would be to shoot for 360 joules uh, at three minutes. Uh, the overall area that they treated was 120 to 200 centimeters squared. So if you recall, if you take a claw grip, that's about 100 centimeters squared. So if you're mapping out the plantar surface of the foot, that's where they came up with that number. So roughly for an average male, I would say it's about 200 centimeters squared for a plantar surface of a foot. And then for a smaller, maybe a female foot, it might be you know 150 or so. So you can map it out with your hand to be exact, a little bit more exact for the given patient you have in front of you. And then just make sure you're gonna be treating most likely both feet. So you're gonna have to multiply that by two, or you could just set it up for one foot and then reapply it to the other side whichever way you like to do it. Uh, there's no wrong answer there. So let's take a look at the screen for the perfect protocol so you kind of get a sense of how you're gonna put this in. So as you're, this is our operation screen. If we cut back to uh, the home screen, you're gonna hit operations and then come over to the right corner for perfect protocol. So if the patient's foot was 150 centimeters squared, say it was a female foot like what we have today, you're gonna enter 150 for the area you're gonna treat. In this case, let's say it's the first treatment. The protocol started with two watts of power and the dose was roughly three joules per centimeter squared. 
So you'd put in three and hit calculate. The treatment's gonna take three minutes and 45 seconds uh, at two watts and you're gonna deliver 450 joules. So that's slightly higher than the 360 because we chose a slightly larger area uh, and a little bit, actually the area was the same but we picked a slightly higher dose um, based on their range that they gave us in the study. It said it was between 1.8 and three joules per centimeter squared. I picked the high end, which is why that number 450 is just a little bit higher. But once you get that and you're happy, uh, you're gonna hit the standby button. Make sure you put your laser goggles on. And then you're basically gonna treat the plantar surface of the foot. So you're gonna activate treatment and then just move from about two to three centimeters per second, just sort of coating the plantar surface of the foot. So that's about as complicated as that would be, you would just continue that out. You know, a lot of times people will ask, you know, well, why do you start so low? I'm used to treating at higher powers, and for most people that's fine. Just remember, with your diabetic neuropathy patients, often they're having some trouble with sensation. So their ability to tell you if it's hot or cold is gonna be impaired. So therefore using lower power from a safety standpoint is a smart thing to do. Uh, it's not a bad idea to make sure you check sharp dull to make sure that they do have some intact sensation. If they don't, you just wanna make sure that you're very uh, aware of that when you choose your heat from the power setting as well as the speed that you're moving the handpiece because they might not be able to tell you that, hey, that's getting warm. Um, so that's probably the biggest risk or precaution you need to take when you're treating this patient population. Uh, next, we're gonna take a look at how they treated the back. So just hold on one second while we get that set up. Okay, so when you're treating the back, it's obviously deeper tissue. So the nerve roots that you're trying to address, namely the dorsal root ganglia from L, you know, two through S1 is what you're gonna shoot for, just to cover all of the nerves that are responsible for innervating the leg and the, and the lower extremity and the foot. So the, the settings for that are gonna be a little bit different. In the study, they used a flat window uh, attachment for this portion. Um, but for those of you that have the massage ball, uh, you'd be A-OK -okay to use this, and I'd probably actually recommend that you use this. I'm not sure that they had the ability to use that in the equipment they had where they did the study. So in doing so, it allows you to put some compression on the tissue, which is gonna help get light to where you want it to go in this deeper scenario. And then you're gonna treat that area uh, in that crosshatch pattern, just going back and forth from L2 to S1 in the area that's involved. So again, they did eight watts of power and they kept it there throughout the whole uh, duration of the study. And the frequency of treatment was twice a week for four weeks. So they did eight treatments on these patients. So if you're wondering uh, prognosis and how long should you recommend to treat these types of folks, it should be a, a plan of twice a week for four weeks and then you could reassess at that point. Um, they treated for, uh, in the L4 through S2 area, it was a dose of 13 joules per centimeter squared. So a little bit higher than the foot because the tissue is deeper. Uh, they estimated an area of 150 centimeters squared and they delivered 1,920 joules to the area. So for those of you without the perfect protocol, you wanna be right around that 2,000 joule level and treat that, uh, if you wanted to mirror the study at eight watts, would be right around there. For those of you folks that have higher power and wanted to experiment with that, this would probably be the place you'd wanna apply it. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do it on the first treatment, but if you wanted to just uh, to bump things up as you're moving the, the power up in the foot, Due to the fact that there's rarely sensation issues proximally like this in the back, you could get away with using you know, up to 10, 15 watts for these patients, which will save you some time on this proximal piece of the treatment. Uh, and most likely it's gonna make it a little bit more effective too. So let's go back to the screen so you guys can take a look at that and just follow along. So we're gonna go back to the perfect protocol. In this case, we're treating the back, like I said. So the area is gonna be 150 centimeters squared. Power for the study was eight watts. So you would hit eight if you wanna replicate that. And then their dose was 13 joules per centimeter squared. And you're gonna hit calculate. So this portion of the treatment's gonna take just over four minutes to deliver those 1,950 joules. So like I said, you would hit start at that point and then you would basically just treat in that cross fashion back and forth from S1 to L2. Trying to just keep that as evenly distributed as possible. If you wanted to use the flat window like they did in the study, you certainly could do that. 
Um, but again, my recommendation would be to try to use the massage ball because I think it's going to give you even a better impact on getting light down to where you need it. So hopefully that answers the question. If you wanted to make one other small adjustment to that treatment, if you wanted to treat up the calf a little bit into the, the tibial nerve, uh, that would be okay in my opinion because you're basically capturing more nerve tissue at that point. So if you had extra time, you wanted to spend another four or five minutes in this protocol, and wanted to expand your treatment from just the plantar surface of the foot up into the calf, tracing that tibial nerve path. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Probably ideally bringing it all the way up to the popliteal space would be great. But other than that, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward, not hard to do. And the nice thing is you're not just, like most of the times we're trying to deal with problems like balance, proprioception, things of that nature, but we're not really doing anything to get to the root cause. In this case, it's a, it's a very rare example that you can use a device that might actually improve the problem itself. And that's what the study showed is that pain numbers came down, function went up when uh, the laser was combined with a good functional program with increased walking and what have you and balance training. So hopefully it'll be a good hit for you and your clinic and uh, you'll be crystal clear on how to do this down the road. So thanks for joining us and uh, don't be afraid to give me a call if you have any questions. Uh, it's mark.callinan at lightforcemedical.com. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks guys.